let's just do this. Um, there we go. So, great. Um, and I, I'm really glad that Sarmad is here with us because he's probably he's uh, you know between him and I, he has the you know more more close connection to peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, systems uh, because he is really uh, one of uh, a, a key uh, member of our transactive energy program. Uh, I'm still an sort of, sort of an outsider, so my view would be uh, you know really an outsider's view. Um, I, I think uh, what I what could bring to the table is um, you know, some experience that, that we had uh, from utility interactions over the years, uh, working with energy storage technology. Um, uh, because you know, not, not only that you know, energy storage is, um, uh, you know, is, is, is really a, a key element of a lot of these uh, new schemes that we are talking about, but also um, it is, still a, a new piece of or emerging piece of technology. Uh, grid scale energy storage was not really very frequent before even 2010 uh, around that time frame. So um, our interactions with various utilities um, uh, where we you know kind of try to enhance the industry adoption of energy storage, uh, could provide some some key insight in terms of you know uh, uh, interaction with the utility industry in adoption of the new type of scheme, uh, which is probably the uh, the peer to peer energy trading is. Um, so just just wanted to you know come from that that perspective, and hopefully uh, some of the lessons that we learn would be useful for the community and for the folks in the forum today. Uh, so obviously, you know, one of the motivation that I, th I thought that, uh, you know, why I want to speak here is, uh, you know, obviously, if we want to um, um, sort of widen uh, uh, or really have a wide scale adoption of peer to peer type energy trading platform, um, the, the physical exchange of electricity is still through uh, the uh, the uh, infrastructure that electric utilities have in place, um, you know, so it is really important that they become the part of the system, they become the part of the thought process as we are thinking about this new industry and all this, you know, paradigm shift we talk about. Uh, there obviously could be other, other mechanisms down the road, I do not deny that, but, um, you know, the wide scale adoption with an existing infrastructure and a healthy transition uh, that needs a utility interaction. So, so you know, engaging with utilities, um, you know, working with them on a new idea uh, that could potentially um, impact or shift their business model or participation model uh, could be challenging. Uh, due to various good reasons, and I will talk about those in the, in the next slide. Um, so learning about those challenges could help um, sort of make the transition uh, more smooth and, and you know, win-win for everyone. Uh, so some of the lessons that we have learned um, through our interaction with energy storage um, could be useful. So that's really uh, what my motivation is, as, as I've just mentioned. I, I want to also use this opportunity to say a few words about the storage program at PNL. Um, uh, the program has a couple of uh, areas. One of the areas is what we call as energy storage industry acceptance, where we work with um, the users um, uh, of the energy storage, and that's electric utilities, most of the cases. And we work with them hand in hand, you know, try to uh, help them understand the value chain and how they can implement and actually achieve the values that are anticipated or evaluated in the planning phase. Uh, and also finally, you know, tracking the values, whether the values that we talked about or were evaluated during the planning stage are achievable. Uh, and, and if not, you know, what are the issues, how they can improve those things uh, so really, uh, you know, that, that whole end-to-end -end and value chain. Um, the map you see here are some of the projects that we have worked um, on so far uh, in the U.S. The, the storage program has been active since about 
2012, 13 at PNNL around that time. So pretty much when the uh, energy storage, grid energy storage was uh, in the scene. Uh, I have joined at a, at a later stage, but uh, since then was a very active part of the program. And Sarma also is, Sarma and I both, both are um, uh, actively involved in the storage program. So we work with a wide range of stakeholders. Uh, electric utilities are obviously one of them. Uh, then also the system operators, regulatory entities, and uh, more importantly, uh, technology developers, because that's, that's really uh, very important. Uh, so, so far we have worked on, you know, with large pumps, pump storage, um, uh, hydro uh, storage systems, you know, probably uh, about more than 1.6 gigawatt and eight, 18 uh, gigawatt hour of storage, it's six in size. I mean, really the, uh, the large pump storage hydro units uh, are, are the main contributors of that big size, but, you know, mostly the uh, smaller storage systems or battery systems within, you know, two, two to um, uh, five, uh, six megawatt range. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give a, a little bit of a background on that so that, you know, you know, when I talk about uh, our experience, uh, you know, where I'm coming from, what sort of, um, uh, you know, where this experience uh, have been originated, et cetera. And these utilities are pretty much, uh, you know, cover pretty much the entire range of, various types of utilities that you can think about. They range from large investor-owned utilities or IOUs. Uh, they have um, uh, what do you call, um, now I see some sort of, line. okay. Um, and, and there was also smaller, um, you know, public utilities, maybe municipal uh, utilities, and there, there are also um, what do you call uh, electric co-ops. So these are really small, uh, small uh, electric utilities uh, uh, where you know the large investor-owned utilities won't, you know, does not provide their service. So this, this is something that um, evolved in the U.S. and also many other countries uh, adopted this model uh, uh, later on. I'm not exactly sure if it's there in Australia, but in, in many other countries, uh, it's, it's there in Bangladesh as well, where I'm originally from. Uh, so yeah, so uh, enough of that. Uh, let's go into the business. So Samar, if you'd like to go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> Great. So uh, what are some of the challenges? Uh, uh, so as we all know that electric utilities are really, uh, uh, you know, risk averse business entities. And, uh, you know, and in some cases for good reasons, they, they want to, you know, preserve the status quo. Uh, uh, and, you know, when you want to sort of discuss a new technology, a new type of scheme or, uh, or method or some, you know, something of that nature that, uh, that could potentially impact their business model. Uh, that's, that, that can become, you know, quite challenging if it's not, you know, done properly and, and they don't really see what's in it uh, for them. So, so for that reason, I think, um, you know, uh, socialization of, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer trading where we want their, you know, active participation, uh, you know, this could be challenging, uh, but that challenge could bring opportunity as well if we if we play, um, you know, appropriately. Uh, so just wanted to bring bring that um, uh, sort of um, you know mindset that uh, when we socialize and when we talk about these things, we uh, if we you know keep in mind that uh, you know these are really really risk averse entities, uh, and so you know we when we think from their standpoint. I think we'd be able to understand, uh, you know, why uh, their uh, their attitude or their uh, you know viewpoint are so, and what can be done to kind of uh, help uh, with that. Uh, I, I think uh, this peer-to-peer -peer trading uh, platforms and and similar uh, platforms and and technologies and schemes are still evolving. Uh, you know how the utilities could participate. Uh, you know how um, sort of you know their their business models are going to be, 
uh, is there still, you know, discussion, uh, you know, evolving discussion? Uh, not a lot of, you know, fixed answers, and you know, we don't expect uh, uh, probably as of yet, uh, because you know, a lot of these things are, you know, we are trying to figure out. But while we are doing so, um, I think, um, you know, it's it's probably, uh, you know, important for uh, to to think about, you know, what if we want to involve the utilities and make them part of the system, how we can actually uh, pitch it to them, you know, what's uh, what's really, um, you know, kind of uh, their their day uh, in the you know life look like uh, you know when they get into this sort of uh, scheme or be, become a part of this sort of system. So really, uh, their their uh, you know day how their day changes from today was the shift. Uh, you know, being able to help with them um, you know could be uh, useful. So this is one of the challenges that that you could see when you talk about a new technology and how their their operation their you know, day-to-day -day, uh, sort of life changes. Um, you know, I, I think in the forum there there are folks that uh, you know probably started their uh, you know research studies back in 2010 around that time when I did. You know, uh, the impact of uh, renewable energy, uh, you know, rooftop solar PV and wind were really hot topics, and uh, you know we used to uh, spend a lot of time understanding the physical impact. Of those uh, things, you know, bidirectional power flow, whether the network is ready for that, you know, the the electricity, uh, the utility infrastructure, how they are going to change. Um, you know, I was a part of that 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 product um, back in my time uh, when I started my PhD. So and now, as we are thinking about this peer-to-peer -peer trading platform, that could also, you know, make some new changes in um, in the power flow, right? Because the the physical flow of Electricity, physical exchange of energy will still happen through the um, uh, distribution networks. Uh, so, how that's going to impact uh, the the utility infrastructure operation day to day? If they need any sort of new protection scheme, new control scheme, uh, you know, what are those? How they can sort of um, cope with it? How they need to invest? Um, you know, these are really important points. Um, and and I, I, although I mentioned about the policy and regulatory readiness at the at a later stage, uh, you know, a lot of their investment in utilities depend on, you know, um, how they can sort of put some of those new investment in the rate base, um, or uh, maybe you know some other form of financing, uh, and that all has to go through uh, the the public utility commissions. That's the U.S. regulatory bodies that um, that kind of define the um, um, sort of the structure for the electric utilities in other countries. There are other bodies um, like AER, for instance, in, in, in Australia and, and others in other countries. So uh, whether the policy and regulatory uh, bodies are ready, you know, what, what they know about these things. And um, this is really important because when uh, the utilities will go and will try to pitch their, their new, you know, sort of scheme, uh, and they're, you know, being part of peer-to-peer uh, -peer trading, how that impacts. Um, I think someone needs to meet. Uh, there's a bit of a noise that I hear. Um, so how that impacts, um, you know, uh, their operation, they will need to, they will need to uh, sort of get this approved um, by the uh, regulatory bodies. So I think that needs to uh, be considered. Um, uh, and and you know some of you might already have experience with policy and regulatory uh, folks and the and the bodies. Uh, it is a it is a quite different uh, game uh, uh, because of you know it's not their day to day uh, job. So when you want to explain um, you know things, you need to come uh, you know from a very basic fundamental stage. Uh, so so these are also facts that you know can make things quite challenging. Uh, information, data sharing, privacy, cybersecurity, these are all, all very known uh, facts or, or uh, issues or with the people in this forum. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I will mention that because these are really, could be really challenging issues. So I still uh, hear some sort of noise. I don't know. If this... Someone needs to mute. Okay, 
So um, I, I wanted to briefly uh, mention uh, this demonstration that we have done. Uh, oh, well, it was supposed to be a demonstration, but it didn't go up to that. And that's where this challenge thing, uh, you know, come. Uh, basically, we were working with Southern California Edison, um, and they wanted to understand how they can incentivize a few, you know, uh, customer-owned, uh, uh, you know, smart inverters in a, in a distribution feeder that had... Um, you know, reactive power control capability. So they wanted to see if they can achieve, uh, you know, flat voltage profile. Know the importance of that. Um, so they wanted to do it. And they wanted to understand how they can incentivize uh, those folks having, you know, owning smart inverters. Uh, and we said, okay, you know, we could try a transactive approach. And they they were not very excited about transactive, but they generally were excited about something that, that would fairly incentivize them. So we could, you know, came up with some transactive approach and you can take a look at this uh, uh, report that we have in the, uh, uh, in the link here. Basically, um, you know, all, all they were interested about the physical aspects. So as, as you can see, as I just mentioned that, you know, how the physical impact is gonna, uh, gonna you know, impact their day-to-day -day life in operating the distribution system would be very, very important. And finally, you know, due to a lot of other issues, they didn't go to a demonstration phase, which we wanted to, and it could have generate really <laughs> we're not able to do. So just wanted to bring that up and, and please let us know if you have any question after looking at the, uh, the report and we'd love to talk about it. So much, uh, next slide, please. So enough of the challenge. Um, so some lessons that we thought could be useful. Uh, I will go uh, through this uh, fairly quickly. I think I'm pretty much at the end of my uh, time. Um, so, you know, basically we found, you know, over, you know, this six, seven years of utility interaction, we found that if you, know, if you can engage the utilities in the learning process, so we know we collect data, we, you know, analyze those, we do something with them. Try to if we try to find some sort of ways to engage them through the process, you know, as we say, hardware in the loop. Now, utility in the loop, learning process that really couldn't help manage the gap effectively. You know, uh, uh, giving them some sort of you know owner sense of ownership and being able to you know, understand what we are talking about. I think that that would really go a long way. Um, in many cases, you know, our day-to-day -day life and the utility folks, their day-to-day -day life is different. Um, there are a lot of terms that we use, they don't use. There are a lot of terms they use, we don't use. So uh, there is, you know, a risk of this communication gap. So if we make uh, really, you know, easy to understand materials that can help illustrate the concepts, we, we found that that works really, really great. Um, so we found really good response if we have done, uh, done that. So, you know, something, the peer-to-peer the -peer trading community also uh, that maybe they can consider. Uh, yeah, this is something that I just mentioned, I think in the previous slide, so understanding the shift from their business as usual, as usual today to you know, when we go into really uh, you know, high penetration of peer-to-peer uh, -peer trading schemes and those you know, energy communities, how their you know, system changes, how their operation and day-to-day -day life change. Uh, that could really provide good good insight for the you know next steps. So you know how, how and uh, in which process they they can achieve those things and how that impact their uh, their operation and their business model. Uh, there is a great deal of um, a stigma attached to uh, you know uh, adopting a, a new technology piece of technology or scheme or a method and then you know failing or or not not having you know an expected outcome or a suboptimal outcome uh, and 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 this is something that I'm not just making and i I personally faced that uh, in my utility interaction. Um, so I think if if we can do something, you know we as a as a community as a whole, not just you know the researchers but the regulators, the investors, I think investors are, are a really great, great um, important community that we need to uh, engage with. Uh, if all of us together can destigmatize that the um, the aftermath of you know unsuccessful demonstrations, that would be really useful because that way you know you would they they won't shy away you know kind of trying out a new new some new technology some new uh, method um, and that could really be impactful if we can if we can make that happen. So and I, I think everyone knows what I'm talking about, uh, but yeah, if we could try to do that, that would be very useful. 
in many cases, there are demonstrations. Um, and after a while, when the demonstration is finished, you know, we just forget about them uh, because it, it was just a demonstration. And yeah, it worked. We collected data. We saw that it worked uh, great. And that's it. And then after that, you know, they, we don't talk about it. So if we, if we really want to kind of make effective use of demonstration, it's necessary to have a continuation pathway um, uh, and, and save demonstrations from being forgotten. I think that would be very, very useful. And this is also, again, something that we have experienced uh, from our life. Uh, now, all these lessons, uh, I'm, I'm just talking about, uh, you know, for the forum, no, for myself or for us, myself and Samrat as well. And uh, the next year, we are hoping to work with a local utility in the state of Washington, uh, where they are thinking about a shared energy economy project. There will be multiple buildings on a campus, um, you know, where they want to share resources uh, through some sort of transaction mechanism, as far as I understand. Uh, and maybe there will be opportunities to, to do some, you know, peer-to-peer -peer like uh, platform. Uh, we exactly do not know, but we would love to report back maybe in a, in a year or so. Uh, there is a link where you can take a look and see when, what, what they really want to do. So I just wanted to uh, mention that. I think with that, I'm at the end of my presentation. Samad, if you want to go to the next slide, I just want to say one sentence uh, about um, our, our, our uh, sponsor, which is the uh, Depart US Department of Energy uh, Office of Electricity. Uh, both uh, Office of Electricity funds both the transactive program and the energy storage program. So we are grateful for their guidance and financial support. If there is any other question, I would love to uh, answer. And, and I really thank you for the opportunity to talk here today and looking forward to uh, hear from you. Thanks.